No, I can pull it's okay, thank you. It's bad there's more food value in that cart than there is in the whole grocery <laughs> store. Oh, I know. <laughs> and you're going to see my chickens in a minute, just really get onto it. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you'd like, though, if you could just take this and, and take it up to that fence, you know, the gate to the chicken pen, that would, that would make it easier for me. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks so much for your help. When did you get your truck painted? Um, last year. No, a year before last. Yeah. Really? Yep. Yeah. It, well, it needed it. <laughs> Well, it's been it's been painted once before, but you know the metal is starting to show up, and I want I want that truck to last. So, you know, paint is paint is basically a preservative. You know? Tell them about uh, how famous your truck is now. What's that? You got a picture somewhere? Do I have a picture? Of your truck? No. In the calendar? Oh yeah, uh, yeah but that's that count that that date's over now. Yeah, yeah. The, there's, a, there's a. I got my steering box rebuilt. It was so cool. The people who did it took a picture of my truck and put it in their calendar. It's a redhead steering. That is so awesome. That's so. My truck is like brand new. I've never had steering this tight. It is so awesome, man. It's just like right there. It's like I've always been doing this, like you know, because it's always been. I've always gotten worn out steering boxes. And I found this company who rebuilds them, and it's just like, oh man, totally changed my life. It is so good. <laughs> on machining are so tight, or tight yeah now. yeah well it's just you know when you have a million miles on something you know things things wear out yeah <laughs> and that that doesn't have power steering so you're really cranking on it Arm so by yeah so it's uh, so it's um it, it, the gears get worked on yeah yeah because right? everything that can break I have a lifetime warranty, so I don't have to buy them, buy them anymore. The only thing I have to pay for on that truck are tires. Yeah, JC Penney's made a fatal mistake. They sold me a lifetime warranty battery in 1974 for $50. And now they're paying $140 for them. The last time I went, it was so because the cashiers have no idea what is this because they never saw it before, you know. So the manager comes and he's got this kind of like not happy look on his face. He says, "Can I buy you out?" And I says, "No." <laughs> I, I, I says, "This is your idea. You put the sign up. This is your commitment, and I'm just yeah. going to hold you to it." And so thank you. When you're 100 years old, you're still going to be going and getting batteries. Yeah, <laughs> because my truck will still be running. <laughs> you know what's interesting about that truck? The army did a thing over here where they took out the grid. Is there a, need? a test thing, and everybody's calling the car manufacturers. We can't open our car. We're pressing the button. Nothing works. And I says, Yeah, we've got calls. The army's doing something over there. And so people don't realize is that when it all shuts down, my truck will be the only thing rolling mm -hmm. <laughs> because there's nothing, no computer anywhere on that. My wife always says, Keep gas in your truck because. You might be the only one, only one moving, you know, because <laughs> all these new cars are all computerized, and they and they can com completely be stopped by the the grid being taken out. Yeah. Well, you have two gas tanks in there, right? Yep, I have I have a, I have a 500 uh, let's see a 600 mile range of that truck. And how many reverses do you have? I have two speed reverse, four, eight speed forward. And the extended frame to me is priceless. <laughs> Yeah, and you see, ha and having and having that toolbox behind the bed, the original bed, is so convenient. Oh, yeah. All your tool and then that elongated frame is just—it's so awesome, you know. It's just like ugh, that truck is just so unique. It's like the only one in the world. And even in its day, if you read the insignia on the side, it says "Job Rated." Right. Below, this little decal says "Custom Regal." They only made 300 of them. If you look at the truck, the windows are wraparound. No truck. That age, they're all flat in the back. This thing are wraparound windows. I mean, it's it's like a totally rare breed. Aren't those blueberries good? Now I want I want to show you guys something interesting here. If you don't don't know about tomatoes, 
There's two types of tomatoes. They're called determinate and indeterminate. Those are, those are indeterminate, and you can see they're just growing everywhere. And you see this little tiny thing by the, by the building up here? That's determinate. You see how small that plant is and it's full of tomatoes ripe? That's the difference. T determinate are so convenient to work with because they don't grow like crazy. And they produce a lot of fruit. But because this variety is my favorite, it's, it's called the sun gold, I put up with the indeterminate all over the place. <laughs> Now, does anybody, um, any herb, herb people here? People like to do herbs? Thyme. Right there. Be very careful when you taste it because it's going to totally blow you away because it's so potent. But I want, no, tiny piece because that's going to, that's good. Okay. Yeah, you'll see. You'll see. Yeah, look how potent. Everybody, I want you to get how potent it is. No thyme you've ever bought in the store. It's like that. Last, last week, I had a naturopathic doctor came here who has been all over the United States going to herb farms because she treats with herbs. And her frustration is, everywhere I go, the quality is terrible. And she's really frustrated. She came here last week. Very tiny piece. And she saw over here at the corner of, my, of, of that fence is a woman's herb called black cohosh. And you can see the beautiful white flowers at the top. She says, I have never in my life seen black cohosh this big and so vibrant in any herb garden. And that plant's only two years old. And you know what's cool about it? Black cohosh only grows in full shade. That is in full sun, south facing. Yeah, that's black cohosh. And it's supposed to grow in full shade. The lady was totally blown away. She, she could not believe, she says, I've been to herb farms. I've never, ever seen this. So to take that away, get a piece of, get some of those onion chives there because they're sweeter. Because it's not warm enough here to grow outside. And you see the glass, you know, um, keeps it warm. I took the roof off so I get, I get sun, but I don't, I, um. So you only keep the sides and not the, not the, the reason, uh, let's talk about this greenhouse, everybody. Do you have a minute? Because this is, I want, this is very important. I want you to hear. Is that you don't realize what's happened to your food. Back in the 50s when I grew up in Los Angeles, so I come from a Swiss German culture, my skin is light. And when I get in the sun, I burn. And I used to go to the beach every, every, every day in the summertime to surf. And I, I'd be peeling all summer long. Totally peeling my skin off. Because I'm light skinned. Back in the 50s, skin cancer did not, did not exist. There was no such thing. Because back in the 50s, everyone ate tomatoes that were growing outside in full sun. Everyone. There were no greenhouses. And here's why. They tested a sun-ripened tomato. You know what they found? 300 phytochemicals in a sun-ripened tomato. Now, let me explain why. You look at a tomato skin. It's beautiful, smooth, gorgeous, no bumps. I mean, any woman would give anything for skin that nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, be real. Tomato skins are beautiful. Why doesn't it blister? It's getting 100 degree sun blazing on it, full blast, and it stays totally smooth because it has a phytochemical that protects it from blistering. They took a same heirloom tomato and grew it in a greenhouse, which they found. 50 phytochemicals. 250 were lost with light going through glass because it interrupts photosynthesis. Today in Seattle where there's no sun, people have skin cancer. Skin cancer is worldwide because all tomatoes today are grown in greenhouses and they no longer provide the protection the Creator made for them. And here's, and here, I want you to hear me, everybody follow me. When do tomatoes get ripe? When? What time of year? August, September, when the sun's the hottest. You think that's a coincidence, an accident? And in cool climates where there's no sun, tomatoes don't grow because you don't need them. The Creator made everything so perfect. It's awesome. It's totally awesome. And this is the whole concept of why you should eat food fresh in season, period. When stuff shows up is when you're supposed to eat it. When it's not there, you shouldn't. Here's why you shouldn't eat tomatoes. 
when they're not there. They're a nightshade. They're not good for you. And people in our culture, I always tell, tell you, you affluent people, you live really boring lives. Because you buy the same garbage at the store every week and it's really terrible. And that's all you know. And so affluent people are buying tomatoes in January when there's no sun. And they have no flavor, they're totally gross, and they're paying big dollars for them. What's the point? They're not good for you, they don't taste good, and you don't need them. And you're buying them, out of season. It's totally stupid. I mean, really. <laughs> well, that's all I have for this video. Bang around that bell icon if you want to be notified when new videos come out. Call us on the hotline if you have comments or questions and want to be featured in an upcoming video. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe. Check us out on the website, and we'll see you guys on the next one.